Number 32. Consider a battery made from one half cell that consists of a copper electrode and one molar CuSO4 solution and another half cell that consists of a lead electrode and one molar PbNO32 solution. And then letter D, the question here is, suppose sulfuric acid is added to the half cell with the lead electrode and some PbSO4 solid forms. Would the cell potential increase, decrease, or remain the same? Okie dokie. And maybe I'll highlight would the cell potential, because that's basically what we're asking for. So, a couple of things here. In previous uh, letters, right, in letter A of this question, we did find out what the uh, standard cell potential is. For this case, it's 0.47 volts. And for letter B, we found out the whole entire equation here, which is Cu2 plus aqueous. That's one molar solution because it's one molar of the copper plus the lead solid yields copper solid plus Pb2 plus um, aqueous. And that's one molar because it's one molar PbNO32. Now, now they're saying that we're adding sulfuric acid to the lead electrode. So it seems like the lead electrode is going to be changing here. So I'm either talking about PB solid here or the PB2 plus, but they tell us that PBSO4 solid forms. So if PBSO4 solid forms, this is a dissociation because what's gonna happen to that PBSO4? It's going to break down into its ions of Pb2 plus and we'll say SO4 minus, 2 minus, right? Remember that sulfate is a negative 2 charge. So even though there's one lead for one sulfate, this was the simplified form. Now the next thing is that since we're talking about equilibrium, right, where we're basically not... We're not at equilibrium anymore because we're adding something. So technically, when we were discussing the copper electrodes with the one molarity and the one molarity, we were at equilibrium, but now we disrupted the, you know, the equilibrium because sulfuric acid was added. So just as I can make this aqueous, these aqueous materials, right, Pb2 plus should be Aq, I could also go back and make this. And now the question is, well, how did PBSO4 get formed? That means that the Pb2 plus and the SO4 2 minus in solution had to come together to form PBSO4 solid. Now, do we have any of these ions in our equation that could be affected? Yeah, here is the link. Pb2 plus is in this equation. And now if we're taking stuff out to use to get to PBSO4, that means that I'm not going to have as much for this reaction, right? Because if you put your money somewhere, you, you don't have that money to put it elsewhere. So if you're taking PB2 plus to try to get to form PBSO4, this molarity of this equation is going to decrease. But now, what does that mean in terms of this? Well, since we're just talking about disrupting equilibrium, we're now not in K land, but we're in Q universe, right? Because we can find a Q value. Now, for this balanced equation, remember Qs are always products divided by reactants. No solids allowed. So I don't care about this one, and I don't care about this one. It's just these two aqueous um, uh, substances, right? So technically it would be the concentration of PB2 plus divided by the concentration of Cu2 plus. Now, we had just have to do some hypothetical thinking here, right? In the beginning, so we can say before change and after change just to kind of get our thoughts moving. So before the change, meaning before we had to take that PB2 plus out to make PBSO4, 
the Q value was equal to just the molarities that were given. I had one molarity for the PB2+, plus and I had one molarity for the Cu2+. Plus. So 1 divided by 1, and the Q is equal to 1. But now afterwards, the Q is still going to be products over reactants, but we now know that that PB2 plus value had to drop or decrease. So it doesn't really matter what value you say. Maybe it decreased by half, maybe 0.5. The Cu2 plus will still be one molarity because that didn't change. And now you have a Q value that's 0.5. So it seems like before the change to after the change, we decreased in the Q value. Now, this is going to be important because now how am I going to link a Q value to the cell potential? We want to know if the cell potential would increase, decrease, or remain the same. Well, that's this equation right here. We have our E cell that is not standard equal to the standard cell potential minus RT and F ln of Q. So basically... Everything else is the same, right? The E cell would be the same standard value. The R would be the same. The temperature, the N, and the F, those would all be the same. The only thing that really is coming down to it is the ln of Q. So let's just basically say, okay, this I don't really need because we don't need to find an exact number. We just need to see if it will increase, decrease, or remain the same. So we're only going to basically focus on E cell equals the standard cell minus ln of Q. So let's do it before and after. Before and after. So let's see, before, what would be our E cell, the non-standard one? Well, the standard one is the 0.47 and since we're minusing the ln of Q before was 1, let's just see what it is. If I plug it in, 0.47 minus the ln of 1. And it's the same value because ln of 1 is 0. So my E cell would just be 0 0.47. Now let's see, is this going to drop, increase, or remain the same when the Q value starts decreasing? So in this case, it would be E cell equals 0 0.47 minus the ln of now a half. Keep in mind that we're just showing that we dropped in that Q value. So 0.47 minus the ln, ooh, not the log, we want the ln, uh, 0.5. Ah, and now the E cell goes up. Now it's like 1.16 volts. And that is basically the answer to this problem. What happened from 0.47 to 1.16? The cell potential increased. And that is your final answer. So we can know the generality now that if you always drop a Q value, your cell potential will always decrease and vice, uh, sorry, always increase and vice versa. If you increase the Q value, you will drop the cell potential. So they are inversely related. Yeah. Okay. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Let's keep working hard. I'll be here every step of the way and I will talk to you in later lessons. Thank you for being part of the community and let's just keep learning. Okay. Bye-bye.